These are the most common terms used in Supreme Commander, and I'll leave a link to this picture so you guys can view the Iceberg tier list while you're watching the video. And starting off at the very top, we have Faf. And all of you guys should know what Faf is. It is, of course, Forged Alliance Forever, and it's basically where the whole community is for the game at this point. It has over a decade of balance patches, it has updates, it has news posts, some of which should look familiar, it has 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, and 4v4 ranked modes, it has custom games, replays, custom maps, mods, including very cool AI mods such as the M27 and M28 AI that are actually really competitive without having to cheat for resources. So if you are at all interested in Supreme Commander, you should absolutely check out Forge Alliance Forever. Next up are the four factions, starting of course with the UEF, who have probably the most conventional units or what a human army would look like in a few hundred years. Cybrins are really good at stealth plays. Aeons really like their unit specialization as opposed to jack of all trades units like these guys. And the Seraphim kind of strikes a nice balance between all of them. If you are new, I highly encourage you to try all of the factions out and see which one you like best. Next on the list is Eco, and Eco just means economy. You'll sometimes hear this used as Ecoing Up, and all Ecoing Up means is just upgrading your economy to higher tech levels. And what does your economy consist of? Well that's very easy, that is mass and power. Mass has to be built on these little green icons around the map, while power can be built anywhere you want. That brings us a little bit deeper into the Iceberg tier list with Hydros and Mexes. And Hydros just stands for Hydrocarbon Power Plants, which can be built during the Tech 1 phase with any engineer. And similar to Mass Extractors, they must be built on specific locations. And Hydrocarbons have these kind of orange lightning bolts for their locations. And generally, you're always going to want to build these because they're just so efficient at generating resources for their cost and MEX simply stands for Mass Extractor. That brings us to Reclaim, which is a very important part of Supreme Commander. If I press Control and Shift at the same time, I can see these mass values of things on the map. For instance, these dead tanks over here, they have mass values of 45 each, and I can tell any of my engineers to just go ahead and reclaim them. And doing so, if you look closely up here, I'm getting 206 right now, and once I start reclaiming, it very quickly pops up very high and goes into my economy. Getting a little bit deeper into the iceberg now, we have NGs and build capacity. And NGs is simply just a catchy name for engineers, and build capacity stands for putting a bunch of engineers or NGs around a certain factory in order to assist it. So for instance, I have a bunch of these engineers all assisting this naval factory, and now if I try to build a battleship, they'll all immediately go in and start helping it. And this is called build capacity because it helps things build quicker. Last up for the economy terms you should know is ringing mexes, and that just means putting these mass storages around mass extractors because it both adds to your mass capacity and it actually makes these things more efficient. And if you guys are at all confused about any of these economy terms, I have a whole beginner's guide series that goes over everything in detail. I'll link it down below, check that out if you're at all confused, but for now, let's move on. Next up we have PD, which stands for point defense, and this just means ground fire against tanks and things like that as opposed to anti-air fire. And that's a great segue into T1 through T4, which just stands for the tech levels. For instance, we have a tech 1 point defense, a tech 2 point defense, and tech 3 point defense. And this goes for everything in the game. If you click a factory, you can cycle through the tech levels. Or if you click an engineer, a tech 3 engineer that is, you can cycle through tech 1, tech 2, tech 3, and experimentals. Experimentals are also known as Tech 4 just because they do indeed come after Tech 3, and every faction has one game ender that's generally a giant artillery piece that takes a long time to build and a ton of resources, but basically if you get a game ender built, the game is essentially over just because you'll annihilate your opponent in a few minutes flat. 
Next up, we have some air terms, starting with INTI, which simply stands for Interceptor, and ASF, which stands for Air Superiority Fighter. INTI being Tech 1 and ASF being Tech 3. And by the time you're building hordes of ASFs, you'll probably want to build these air grids, which are essentially just Tech 3 air factories, alternating with Tech 3 power gens to get the adjacency bonuses that are super helpful for air production since air is generally very power heavy. Snipe is essentially the alternative to winning a battle conventionally through a larger force with tanks or a navy, and instead maybe you get a group of strats or strat bombers and you get a sneaky little kill on the commander or you snipe the commander, which will of course explode the commander and eliminate that player from the game. Full share is simply the opposite of no share, and that is essentially when you're playing with teammates and your teammate dies. Do you inherit their base, or does their base just explode with their commander? If full share is on, you will inherit your teammate's base when the commander explodes. If full share is off and there's no share, once the commander is killed or sniped, all of your allies' stuff will explode with the commander. By default, ranked games in FAF are full share now. Overcharge refers to this unit ability on the commander that kills most units in this range at tech 1, but it does need at least one E storage to use. The damage does scale with the more energy storages you have, so as you move up in tech levels, it's probably a good idea to build more E storages as well. Arty simply refers to artillery, and that can be both T2 artillery and T3 artillery, and the same concept of ringing mass storages around mass extractors. You can do the same thing with artillery and radar, in fact, and ringing artillery with power generators will make them fire faster. So T2 artillery you can surround with T1 power generators to get a slight rate of fire increase, and the same principle applies to Tech 3 artillery, you just surround that with Tech 3 power gens and that will fire faster as well. RAS and Advanced RAS stands for Resource Allocation System, and this is a later game upgrade on your commander where if you click him and then you come over here to the Enhancements menu, for the UEF it's going to be on this right arm right here, and if you click it he starts upgrading and then they get a pretty significant amount of resources permanently on your commander, making them essentially a bonus high-tech power generator and a bonus mass extractor. RAS spam has to do with building these quantum gateways at Tech 3, and then in Forge Alliance Forever there are several presets you can build for these support commanders, and one of the presets is a RAS preset. So essentially you just leave these RAS presets on endless loop, and you spam out these RAS or resource allocation system support commanders who automatically have the RAS built into them. And this is helpful at late game for when you have nowhere else to expand as an alternative to building mass fabricators. Combat Com also has to do with the upgrades on commanders or support commanders, and they are one of the presets in here. There's Combat and Rambo, and again, that just has to do with picking the upgrades that have to do with fighting and weaponry, as opposed to resource allocation systems or engineering suites. And Com Drops or Commander Drops is simply just building a transport to ferry either support commanders or your main commander anywhere on the map. Alright guys, we're getting pretty deep on this iceberg now, starting off with the Ghetto Gunship, which is a typically a Tech 1 gunship filled with light assault bots. And these Tech 1 light assault bots are the only units that can shoot off of transports in the entire game. So typically at Tech 1, before you get access to regular gunships, there's no gunships in Tech 1, You'll build these light transports and then fill them with some light assault bots, and that is why it's called a ghetto gunship, or kind of a knockoff gunship, until you get the Tech 2 and Tech 3 gunships later in the game. Okay, and now getting on to some of the fun ones for experimentals, starting off with the spider and the crab for Cybrin. These are two experimentals, again, for Cybrin, and the first one, the lighter one, is nicknamed the spider. And the second larger one is nicknamed the Crab. 
for Aeon, we have the GC or the Galactic Colossus. And for Seraphim, we have whatever the heck this is. I think it's Ithota. But everyone just calls this the chicken. Seraphim are actually big fans of chicken looking things with big wings like that because their tech to assault bot and their commander vaguely have chicken esque wings like that. So Seraphim is the faction of the chickens. And then UEF has the fat boy. And while we're on the topic of experimentals, the Cybrans also have the Maser, which just stands for the Microwave Laser Upgrade, and when combined with the Personal Teleporter, turns the Cybran Commander into a devastating sort of mini-experimental that can pull off some devastating snipes if the enemy is not prepared for it. And one bonus term before I get to the end of the list here, and that is going to be floaty floaty, naughty naughty, credit to Guilecast for that term, and that just has to do with any land units that can hover and go on the water. It's especially prevalent on the Aeon faction, they have scouts, tanks, flak, tech 3 units, and shields, so the Aeon has a ton of floaty floaty, naughty naughty units. But shout out to Guile, he's awesome. Go check him out, he's actually how I found out about the game. So thank you Guile for that awesome term. And last but certainly not least is indeed the Ass Washer. And what on earth do I mean by that? Well, of course it's going to be a Seraphim name. Just look at this down here. How would you pronounce that? That is the Awasa, Awasa. Uh, ass washer, uh, ass washer. Yep, that is the ass washer. So the seraphims are kings of things that are difficult to pronounce, and that will tie out our list. If you have anything to add, definitely leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.